Welcome to another episode of Diary of a Puzzle Gamer. If you watch some of my previous episodes in this vlog within my larger gaming vlog, you know that recently I solved two puzzles that had Tibetan Buddhist art as their subject. I put them on the wall and the section where they are, they look great, but there's just enough room for another one and since all good things come in three I really wished I really wanted to have another one that would form a nice set on the wall so I looked and looked and looked it turns out that pomegranate doesn't have any other puzzles uh, about Tibetan Buddhist art but it turns out that they had one. They don't have one in the catalog now, but there is an auto print that is floating around and I was able to buy a copy on eBay. So several things. Well, first, this is the thing, Buddha in Nirvana. This is what we are looking at today. But several things. One is that, probably because it's an older puzzle, it is slightly different from the recent ones. So when I opened the box, the first thing I noticed is that the box looked much fuller than other 1000 pieces puzzles by pomegranate and that is because these pieces are slightly larger the finished puzzle is slightly larger than than the other two that you saw in my videos also the pieces are thicker and that's why they took more they took up more room in the box but then also because of that they lock beautifully once you click them in they are good and then if you have to move a section around oh transfer this part of the frame or whatever it's very easy i'll show you how nice and tight the fit is about the subject buddha in nirvana i looked at the image and i was like wait a second is this a nirvana all that hard work that you that you do to go to nirvana and then nirvana is you're taking a nap on an uncomfortable table surrounded by weird people but then I realized that's not Nirvana yet that is misleading that is and in fact it says here on the size the death of Buddha is this oh yeah the death of the historical Buddha okay that makes sense so this is Buddha and Nirvana the prequel so the guy is just dead, everybody's sad about the animals, human beings, demons, other weird creatures. And it looks like these are the people here and coming from Nirvana to pick him up and give him a ride. As you can see, I'm using all these technical terms from Tibetan Buddhism because I don't know the first thing about Tibetan Buddhism. So I'm just kind of giving him my interpretation, which is sort of fun, but I don't mean to be disrespectful. Um, I just don't know, but I like the art, I like the way it looks. Now, without further ado, let's take a closer look at the puzzle itself. So, this is the completed puzzle in all of its glory. Really beautiful, really nice. A challenge too, but I'm really happy to have it now in my collection and, and I can't wait to see it on the wall to complete the, the set. Now, um, as you can imagine, like one does with puzzles, I completed the edges first, which was pretty easy thanks to these two red edges here, which basically were not in the original art, I assume. They were just placed there so that the, the original art would fit the proportion of a thousand, thousand piece uh, pomegranate puzzle. And I'm wondering here, I really like to challenge received knowledge. I'm always trying to be a critical thinker. If you tell me that's the way it's done, I challenge that. But there's one thing I just realized, the one piece of knowledge that I may have never challenged in my life is, I was told when I was a kid, you do the edges first. Is that still a thing? Is that still the unquestionable best way to start a puzzle? Anybody watching the video has better ways of doing it? Please let me know because I'm curious because I just realized that may be the one thing that I've always accepted and never questioned. But it did serve me well here. So first I completed the edge. Then the sky just because of its very distinctive color. Then similarly because of the distinctive color the white parts. And I have to tell you that was Difficult. I don't know why. Probably just because of these weird meandering shapes. I just could not do that part. It took me forever. That was probably the hardest part of the game. Well, of the game. Of the puzzle. 
But after that, it was sort of like blue sky, so to speak. Then I went down here with the trees, which were easy to find and to identify. And it also gave me anchors for the other things around. The uh, pattern on the Buddha's thing, the pedestal of the altar that the guy is resting on, that also was very different from everything else, so that was not too hard. What's next? Next, the animals. Some animals that I recognize, some not really, a sort of like demon, bird, woman here. But look at the beauty, the level of detail is great. I'm sad that all of these animals are sad, they're also crying for the death of the Buddha. This looks like an elephant that used to be obese and then lost a lot of weight and so they had all that like skin hanging there. Again you see that's certainly what the original Tibetan Buddhist meaning was. And I guess here's the idea that the animals are at the lower level. Then around the Buddha we have all sort of creatures basically divided in several groups. Bold people that haven't eaten in a while, I might assume disciples of the Buddha, weird red demons, women with a lot of makeup or at least they look very pale otherwise and then other random people that stop by and they're like oh everybody's crying I guess I'll cry too so that I don't look too weird. This part, the, the circle of weird people around the Buddha Despite the anchors and that held, the anchors provided by the trees, this was just the hardest part. Just it took me a lot of time, but the result, well, I'm very pleased with the result. Well, remember I told you I wanted to show you the, the fit, the fit, how these pieces are really thick, are thicker than pomegranates pieces that you find these days, or at least that's my impression, and they also lock so well. To the point that you could just grab it like this and pull it up and pull it up and pretty much pull up the whole thing look at this the whole puzzle just standing in my hand that's how tight the fit is and that means that this will be very easy to transfer on the support that then will be surrounded by your frame, it'll go on the wall. There are other puzzles that just don't transfer so well. So that's the great thing. I wish the Pongrenade was still doing puzzles of this kind. Um, another thing, however, of course, if you are playing an, uh, with an out of print puzzle, you have to be extra careful. You never want to lose a piece of your jigsaw puzzle, but if it's an out of print, then in case you do lose it, then you're on your own. With a puzzle that's still on print, you contact the publisher and usually they'll send you the missing piece. But if it's out of print, then you gotta be extra careful. So that would be the only warning that I'm gonna give you. It's a great puzzle, really challenging, really a nice challenge. I enjoyed doing it and I'm very happy that I did. This also completes my mini-series about, uh, about puzzles uh, featuring Buddhist art. Next time, what's going to be on the next puzzle? Next time, it's war.